Once breast cancer is confirmed, there are many factors we take in consideration so that we decide on the treatment plan. Uh, when I say we, it's a multidisciplinary team decision. So you might be seen one phase uh, in the clinic, but then you need to know that there is a whole team on the background working on the same case. It's a multidisciplinary approach and we take in consideration uh, the risk factors of the patient. So we usually look at the age, the tumor size, the lymph node involvement, yes or no, the extent of the disease, but then also the biology of the, the breast cancer. So um, it's not one size fits all. Every patient is unique and our approach will be really uh, tailored based on that specific patient. Depending on the biology of the breast cancer, we will be using different treatment options. We can use chemotherapy, which is an intravenous infusion that will try and stop any rapidly multiplying cells. We can also use some oral tablets, the endocrine therapy or the hormonal treatment, as commonly known, uh, that will uh, block specifically the hormone receptors that can be expressed by the tumor. We can also use targeted therapy, which will um, target the HER2 pathway. And immunotherapy in few rare cases, and it's the triple negative breast cancer type that can actually respond to immunotherapy when we are using an intravenous immunotherapy that will enhance the patient's immune system to go and find the cancer cells. Earlier, it was breast cancer, mastectomy for everyone, chemotherapy for everyone, and then radiotherapy almost for everybody. But nowadays, based on those thousands of patients and the clinical trials that have happened around the world, but then also in Kenya, because we nowadays have clinical trials targeting breast cancer at the Aga Khan University Hospital. We know how to tailor our treatment and uh, a lot of de-escalation has happened. So in terms of surgery, we are less and less, uh, less morbid, less and less invasive. So we do uh, breast conservation surgeries more often than before. And then in terms of systemic treatment or radiation, um, as I mentioned, it's not one size fit all. But nowadays we know which, will, uh, which patient will require chemotherapy, so we are less and less using chemotherapy for early stages, and we know which ones will require the targeted therapy, which will, will not require. So it's uh, more towards the precision oncology type of approach, and then for each specific patient and subtype of breast cancer, we have a unique kind of approach and a unique kind of treatment plan. It has been proven that having a healthy lifestyle does improve uh, managing the side effects during the treatment, but then it does significantly increase the survivorship of the patients. And when I say lifestyle, what we usually advise our patients in the clinic is to have a healthy diet, which will be low in carbohydrate, rich in fibers, uh, vegetables and fruits, and then uh, trying to consider natural food rather than um, genetically modified food or processed food. And then having a physical activity, and we recommend at least 150 minutes a week of physical activity, which as I mentioned, helps coping with the side effects during the treatment period, but then increases the survivorship. And the last thing, a stay away from alcohol and tobacco, which is really part of also the healthy lifestyle. From day one of the uh, diagnosis, what we do at the Aga Khan University Hospital, we do not only take care of the cancer as a physical illness, we also take care of the um, mental well-being of the patient. And the first clinic is usually immediately followed by a psychological evaluation and then a counseling session as part of our uh, program. So we take care of both the illnesses, the physical, but then also the mental. And we have our breast survivor group and support group at the Aga Khan University, and it's led by our psychologists. So they basically have the support from the psychologists, but then also from other patients. Breast cancer, when discovered early, we have a survivorship of more than 80%. The whole message I can send to the patients is that number one, it's not a death sentence. Number two, it's one of the most curable cancers that we have. Treatment plan is less morbid and less toxic to the patients as of 2025 compared to the earlier uh, years where we started treating it. And it's uh, something that will make them feel uh, stronger.